Uh, we're gonna continue our so come on in. There's so much to learn, and it's something that we should know. We should learn because we have a very real enemy in the Christian life, and the scripture tells us not to be ignorant of his devices. So, Father, we ask that you bless this time and that you give us understanding and insight to better be prepared for the warfare that we are in. We had said before that um, we're in a very real war. And uh, w the Bible tells us that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness in high places. Sometimes the battles that you think you're facing that are with human beings are in fact the enemy working behind the scenes. And so we need to be aware of his devices. His uh, mission, as we said before, is one thing. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He hates your guts. He hates any image of God um, represented within you. And his aim is to completely destroy you. He hates God's image. He hates God's uh, word. And he hates God's work. He hates when you worship the Lord. So these are some of the things that the enemy uh stands for. I'm going to give you five things today that are strategies of the enemy. They all begin with the letter R. There are many more and they can be worded in different ways, but for this study, I'm going to give you five things. Number one, one of his strategies is to get you to react in your emotions. Okay, so letter R, react in your emotions. He's like a shark. If you were in a, a boat in the middle of the ocean, as long as you stayed in the boat of faith, you're safe. But if, you, if the shark was able to lure you into the ocean of emotion, you are going to be eaten alive. Because that's where he operates, in the realm of the emotion. So the enemy will always try to get you to leave the, the word of God and the place of safety, the place of faith, and to, to jump into the ocean of emotion. And he uses fear. One of his number one tactics is that of fear. But in 2 Timothy 1.7, we are told God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. So we need to remember that, that fear is not of God. Fear is something that the enemy uses to get uh, to use against you to get you out of the realm of faith and into the realm of the emotions. Another strategy that the enemy uses is ridicule. He tries to minimize and ridicule your identity and who you are in Christ. He tells you that you're nothing, that you're no one, that God doesn't love you, that God doesn't forgive you. He lies to you because that's who he is he's a liar and he's a father of every lie but the scripture says that you are a chosen generation if you know christ is your savior a royal priesthood a holy nation his own holy people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light first peter 2 9 so First one, he will try to get you to react in your emotions. Second, he ridicules your identity. But we need to know who we are in Christ and what we have in Christ and stand strong in our identity and don't be moved. Because it's not about us, but it's about who he says that we are. Okay, the next one. The enemy will try to recruit additional forces if he can't come against you it with a minimum attack he's going to call other forces to join his efforts to come against you you know he is um he he's like an army and he comes against you um from all sides but the scripture says 
Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though, though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. These were the words of um, King David in Psalm 27, 3. He did not, uh, he was not moved by numbers. And the enemy would use numbers um, or size. His ta that's one of his tactics, to use many things or to use something that is very huge. Um, when David faced Goliath, uh, Goliath was this huge guy and all of the armies of Israel trembled at his sight, but David did not. And other times in battle, he faced many armies, but he was not moved by numbers because he was confident in God. So the enemy will try to recruit additional forces against you. He's into size and numbers. Another thing that the enemy does, he tries to raise questions to bring doubt. One of the questions that he asked Jesus was, if you're really the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Because he knew Jesus was hungry. Jesus had gone 40 days and 40 nights without food. And he tries to plant that seed of doubt. He did it with Eve in the garden and it worked. You know, he said, did God really say that you can't eat of, of any of the trees? You know, he was raising questions as to the goodness of God. So that's one of the lies of the enemy. He tries to raise questions that would bring doubt. But remember, Matthew 24, 35 says, heaven and earth will pass away. But my word, says the Lord, will by no means pass away. So rather than, than lean on your own understanding, on those doubts and those questions, lean fully on the word of God because his word is fully dependable, reliable, and everything else will fade away, but not his word. Do not allow, allow the enemy to raise questions of doubt in your mind. Another way that the enemy attacks is he tries to redirect our focus. Um, when Nehemiah was, was leading the efforts to rebuild the wall uh, around Jerusalem, the enemies tried to distract him and get him away and make him refocus on something else. And that's what the enemy will try to do, especially if we're uh, doing a work for God. And he'll just say, you know, well, what about over here? And he tries to distract us. He tries to discourage us. He tries to reroute our our direction and our work for God. But in Hebrews 12, we're told to stay focus. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God. Jesus stayed focused. He did not allow the enemy to redirect his efforts. He stayed focused and he went to the cross. Stay focused and do what it is that God has called you to do. Okay, and remember, those five things. Um, that he wants to uh, get you to react in the emotional realm. He wants us to. Um, uh, he wants to ridicule our our identity. He wants to re bring recruits, additional recruits and forces against us. He wants to raise questions of doubt within our minds, and he wants to redirect our focus. These are some of our strategies. But the Lord says in Matthew 16, 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Satan is already a defeated foe. And let's just focus on the Lord and know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. And greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. God bless you, and I hope that you can put these things into practice so that you can live a life in victory over the enemy. God bless.